Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to part two of my favourite progressive rock epics. It's actually been over a year since I did part one, so not sure what happened there, but go check that one out if you haven't already. Um, that one, I spoke about all the classics like Yes, Genesis, Pink Floyd, all the kind of classic prog epics, Caravan, ELP, all of that. So for this video, I thought I would try and do ones that are a little bit less known, I suppose. Obviously, if you're a prog super fan, you're probably going to know these um, and they're not going to be like really obscure. So don't come for me in the comments if these are like the most obvious things ever. To me, these are less well-known epics and ones that I feel aren't really spoken about enough. So as always, um, open to your recommendations. Please leave me recommendations in the comments. I actually got some amazing recommendations on my last video from you guys, so I would love that again. And also let me know what you think of the epics that I've chosen. Um, for the purpose of this video and the last one, if you watch that, then an epic for me is anything that's over 15 minutes. I mean, I'm not sure if that technically is true, but for me, because I already did a video that was prog songs less than 15 minutes, everything included in this video is over 15 minutes. I'm not sure if there is an actual definition of an epic, but that's my definition, so yeah. My first pick is gonna be a song called Sago Brus by a band called Agusa. Not sure if I'm saying it right, but everything will be on the screen. Um, my favorite thing about this song is that it came out in 2021. I'm pretty sure I spoke about the whole album in my um, top albums from 2021 video, so go check that out. But it came out in 2021 and I think it really just proves that prog is not dead and there's still actually quite a lot of good music around if you look for it. It has a very vintage feel and it's definitely inspired by bands like Camel, but it also feels really modern and fresh, which I just love. The guitar tone is very similar to Andy Latimer's guitar tone on um, the Camel album, Moon Madness. It's really smooth. And I just, I've spoken a few times, I think about how much I love Andy Latimer's playing. And this really is reminiscent of that. Also how gorgeous is the album cover? I just have to say, I absolutely love the album cover. It's so beautiful. And I'm gonna try not to talk too much about all of these songs because we will be here all day, but this song does have one of my favorite, I guess you would call it a trope, a prog rock trope. And that is when you hear a melody at the start of the song and then it comes back in the middle or at the end of the song. But when it comes back, it's got way more instruments playing it. It's just very epic or it's louder or it's played faster or it's just different in some way, but it's still the same melody from the start of the song. Absolutely stunning. I'll show you how this manifests on the song Saga Bros. So this is the melody at the start of the song. Literally so gorgeous. And then it comes back at the end of the song and sounds a little bit different. So this is the end of the song now. So my next choice is going to be the song Forever Reoccurring by Gong. Recently, but well, actually it wasn't really that recently to be fair, it was at the start of the year. But I saw Gong live and they played the whole of this song and it was so good. Seeing it live just gave it a whole another dimension. They really did put on such an amazing performance. And I liked the song before, but seeing it live definitely elevated it for me. It's very psychedelic and the whole album is actually, but this is definitely the most psychedelic song I would say. It's a very slow burnout. It does take a few minutes for vocals to come in um, and then everything builds really, really slowly until there's this like big crash of sound and it's just fabulous. The whole song reminds me of a kaleidoscope. I feel like that is how I would describe it. And it's actually pretty similar to some early gong even though it was released in 2020. And I really would recommend giving this one a go if you've never heard it before because it's fabulous. I know I said I wanted to talk about less well-known epics but I do just have to put a few in here that are obviously quite known just because that's the nature of it so this is extremely well known but I just wanted to give it a mention because I think sometimes the popular music is popular for a reason so my next choice is Tubular Bells by Mike Oldfield for me this absolutely has stood the test of time it is still a complete classic I don't even really know how to describe it but obviously this album was absolutely huge for Mike and he really did pioneer something special and I know it's been said literally a million times before, but we have to address how young he was when he made this album because that is just insane to me. I feel like with epics as well, I always like to pick out and 
play certain parts because you've always got your favorite like little part of an epic and mine is this part where the guitar comes in here because i just think the whole vibe of the song changes at this point Is. I don't even know how to describe it, but I'm sure you know the whole album slash song is just incredible. My fourth pick is going to be the song I Am The Sun by The Flower Kings. There is a part one and part two to this. The first part is the first track on the album and I think it's 15 minutes long. And the, the second part is the last track on the album and that's 10 minutes long. But I'm just going to talk about them collectively as one piece even though technically they are split up by the album and i think it's really difficult to talk about modern prog without comparing it to um the 70s classic prog but f like i'm really guilty of this as well and i think sometimes you can't help it although i'm trying to not do that having said that i am gonna have to compare it and <laughs> this song reminds me of nine feet underground by caravan which was an epic that i talked about in part one of this video which is absolutely a compliment because i really love that song and it's very very unique and also what i really love about this song is it feels kind of like it has a chorus because there's lots of like repetitive phrases or uh, melodies and lots of prog songs don't have choruses i guess so it's kind of nice to just have that it makes it easier to listen to because you've got something to like refer back to and it makes it kind of easier to keep track of and i do again have a favorite part to show you this little jazzy little section to this little bit here i just love that that is so that is just so progressive rock and i just love it next up is a song by what I believe is the best modern prog band of all time, probably, I feel like a few people would agree, Porcupine Tree, my beloved, my, the sun in my sky, Stephen Wilson, I love you. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I'm going to talk about the Sky Move Sideways phase one. I literally love this song so much. I listen to it all the time. I think it's just absolutely incredible. I spoke about anesthetize in part one of this video, which is definitely one of the best if not the best porcupine tree song not even just epic um but i wanted to talk about this one because it is almost as good in my opinion it's very spacey very psychedelic definitely pink floyd inspired but it's just pure stephen wilson genius like how else can i even describe it it's one that really just calms me down as well like if i'm feeling a bit stressed or whatever i can listen to this and it will really calm me down because it's quite slow paced it doesn't really get much faster until like nine minutes in when the vocals come in and Stephen singing it just makes me really happy because he sounds really young <laughs> and it's cute and yeah this is a great one if you haven't heard it definitely listen to it it's definitely up there with the greats in my opinion and for my next choice I'm gonna choose a song from a band that I've really am late to the party and I've only just got into and it's the Pineapple Thief there were plenty of epics for me to choose from um, in their discography, but I am kind of still working my way through it because, as I said, I've only recently got into them. I've heard of them loads of times because I love Mr. Gavin Harrison, as we know, um, but I hadn't done a proper deep dive until a few months ago. So there were songs like Parted Forever, What Have We Sown, that I could have chosen, but the song that I've gone from is a song called Remember Us from their album Variations of a Dream. For me, I absolutely fell in love with this song after the first listen. It went straight on my playlist. I listened to it like a million times. And I wouldn't really say that this song is overly complicated. Um, it's kind of repetitive, but it doesn't feel like you're listening to a 16 minute song. It's very accessible and it really hooks you in because the intro, like the first few minutes or whatever, are really beautiful. Absolutely stunning gorgeous and then when the vocals come in it kind of reminds me of like early Coldplay which I love Coldplay so that's definitely a compliment but it does give me like Chris Martin vibes I don't know if that's just me but all in all this is an amazing song and I'm looking forward to listening to more Pineapple Thief. Okay my next choice is one that is pretty well known um it's Hemispheres by Rush. 18 minutes of absolute excellence if you ask me I hadn't actually listened to this song in like a, quite a few years and then I was like preparing for this video and I listened to it again and I was like wow it's so good I love how there's like no messing about it literally hits you as soon as the song starts there's no build up like in a lot of prog songs but I think Rush will always want to do something different and I think probably Hemispheres is my favorite album by Rush 
I probably, I feel like I've made that decision now. I love how upbeat it is. The production is so lush and just epic. And this song is the perfect opener in my opinion. I love it in this song when at about, I think it's like 12 and a half minutes when everything kind of switches up and slows down and then the vocals have some kind of effect on them like you're underwater. I don't know what that would be, but it sounds like you're underwater and I am an absolute sucker for that. And also the way the song ends as well, the drumming, next level drumming so good but that is that is just rush in a nutshell isn't it really um okay so the last epic that i'm going to talk about in this video is another one that i'm kind of new to as well and it is the great nothing by spock's beard so i'm kind of new to spock's beard i'm just getting into them now this song is 27 minutes long which is definitely the longest on this list i could literally cycle from my house to my workplace in less time than this song takes to play but it's a great song i love um how the acoustic guitar kind of starts things off and then how the bass and um like the distorted guitar comes in and this is proper groovy little bass line going on it's very catchy and it's very danceable which is maybe a weird word i know some people don't like the idea that you could like dance to prog rock and stuff or like a lot of people feel like it needs to be listened to in a dark room on vinyl but i kind of don't think that i'm always dancing around the house to camel and spock's beard but anyway then the song switches up and you've got just piano and vocal so things are constantly switching up in this song which you kind of need to if you're gonna have a 27 minute long song and although the vocal section do kind of remind me of a prog west life <laughs> i still love it so that is it for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much again for watching as always. Um, please leave me some recommendations in the comments. And for my next video, I was thinking of doing a video about some of the concerts that I've been to, like the best concert experiences that I've had. So let me know if that's something you'd want me to do. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week for another video.